the Grande Grotta. It's a huge cave, most iconic of them all. And here is just one of the best places to get amazing tufas and overhanging climbs. I mean, it's an amazing place. You wake up and you are climbing just at the seafront. You're hearing the waves. Good evening, guys. I'm really happy to share with you one of my favorite islands. I'm going to tell you something more about myself. So I'm 31 years old. I'm the founder of the Vertical Sailing Tour and you'll meet me on board as a skipper. I love mountain sports. I work as a ski instructor during the winter season and uh, I organize the Vertical Sailing Tour and uh, work as a skipper during the tours. Something that's in common with my two jobs is that I really love to share with my guests the things that I love to do in the way I love to do it, whether it's on skis or on the rock or on the ocean. That's what I'm trying to do at the Vertical Sailing Tour and that's what we are trying to give you this feeling and these emotions. He's going to be your guide for the tour. He's Alberto, of course, a fully certified mountain guide. He has been with us since the very beginning. He's very experienced, has been guiding for more than 15 years now. He's been all over the world, from El Capitan to Cerro Torre, all over. He bolted routes anywhere, like in Saudi Arabia, in Jordania, in Oman, and... Uh, also in Kalimnos, actually. A good thing of Alberto is uh, super easy going and uh, he's very patient and helpful. He's going to be there 24 7 the whole week to provide you with some great pro tips for your climbing and leading the activities on land. Here you can see what we are going to talk about during this webinar. And uh, so let's start right away. So you can see here, I still have my chalk bag on. That's really representing the best combo for us, which is sailing and climbing. Why do we think that it's the best combo? Because it really allows us to have access to places that otherwise would not be reachable or would be really hard to access. You will see throughout the presentation that actually it's going to be in Kalimnos. There are some places that are much easier to be reached on a boat. And the way we use the boat, we like to imagine it as a, our base camp. So if you are outdoor lovers or climbers, you know, it's good to have a base camp. Maybe it's your tent, it's your home in the mountain, it's your van. So it's somewhere where you go, where you rest, where you eat. You just recover the energy and, you know, it's your safe place. Having it on the boat allows us to moving it effortlessly. Just by sailing, we open the sails and we sail from one place to the other. Then we disembark, we leave our base camp and we get on land and we start our activities. Kalimnos is well known among the climbers and it's one of the dream destinations of all the climbers. So let's see why is that. We are in Kalimnos, of course, the land is in the back. So that's Kalimnos Highway. You can see all the oleanders are in flower. So it's just a very nice place with positive vibes, good energy. It's the place to be. The nature is amazing. Uh, locals are helpful and welcoming. The sea is beautiful and uh, of course the rock it's uh, something unique. Not only for the quantity because there's a lot a lot a lot of rock on the island but also the quality so it's really special limestone which you will see can get in very different shapes and forms. That's a friend of us, Federica, she's climbing here. It's actually in Sikati Cave. You can see she just went into a hole inside the wall to get a rest and you can see these columns of perfect limestone coming up. So that's just a touch of what the rock can look like in Kalimnos. I was telling you about the rock in Kalimnos. It's not only a lot, it's not just beautiful, but the crags, for example, like this one that you see here, it's called Odyssey, this crag, and it's very nice for us because it has lots, lots of routes. We have more than 100 routes just on this crack here, and they go from the fourth grade to 9A. So whatever level you have, you will have fun. And all the crags are often like that. So a wide range of pitches that you can choose about. Remember in Kalimnos, just to give you some data, we have now between Kalimnos and Talendos more than 70 crags for over 3,500 routes already bolted, sport climbing routes. So I think that for a week, that's more than enough. And of course, because we are on an island, 
we have beautiful sea. So you will see later on during the presentation where this beach is located. And uh, these are the, our two boats on this wonderful beach just for us. Nobody there. Amazing. Okay, so I'll talk you through now some of the highlights, some of the best places that we will visit during our tour. And we will start from the most iconic of them all, and it's the Grande Grotta. That's probably the most famous picture. It's a huge cave, Grande Grotta, in Italian means big cave, because it was bolted by Italians in the beginning. You see Talendus in the back. And here is just one of the best places to get in touch if you're not used to with uh, some steep overhanging climbing and being able to climb on these tufas formations, which are quite unique and uh, you don't find in them in many places in the world. Kalimnos is one of them. So it's basically these columns, stalactites and stalagmites that you can climb on. Just to give you an idea on how big the cave is, you can spot on the bottom right the climber and uh, is actually halfway on the route. So again, we have routes for everybody here because on the other side of the cave, we can find some uh, easier routes. And then if you really want hard climber pushing yourself, you can just go all the way up there. And actually, it's a super cool place to watch the sunset. Usually, we go to climb at the Grande Grotta in the sunset. And this is a picture that photographer friends of us took of Federica. So on one side, you have Talendos, the sea, the Grande Grotta, and the sun setting. This is some of the cool things that you get on in Kalimnos. So another place that we will go to, it's actually the beach. It's actually the name of the crag because it's just by the beach. In this inlet, we can sail in. You can see again our two boats moored over there. And this was actually early morning climb. So few of us, the other ones were sleeping. The early morning guys just decided to disembark and we went with our dinghy on the beach and we started to climb. You can spot the beach in the back of the boat. There are actually two beaches here, one on the back of the boat, the other one just much closer around the corner. And we like to do the barbecue there at night. I mean, it's an amazing place. You wake up and you are climbing just at the seafront. You're hearing the waves. And then if you want to go back on boat, you just, you have a swim to the boat. Everything is super close. It's amazing. Here's another amazing place, which is Talendos. Talendos is this little island facing Kalimnos. It has a huge quantity of rock, a lot, a lot, a lot of rock. So we will go there. Of course, we sail. And then you see with the dinghy, we disembark. And all the climbers that go to Kalimnos, if they want to go to Talendos, then they have to wait for the fishermen, take the boat. They have strict time schedules, so they are not coming too early. They don't leave too late. So having the freedom of reaching the island wherever you want, it's something unique. Sometimes we are the first ones to climb on the island and sometimes we are the last ones to leave at the sunset. Here you see the approach. We just disembarked and now we're going to hike up and you can see some of the crags in the background over there. In Talendos, you will find lots of different type of climbing from slabs. Here again, this is Harmony. She was our guest from United States. I remember we were taking these pictures. Some of the crew was sailing. That's actually our boat sailing below there, sunset. And here we were on Irox. That's a crag close by the sea where you can find some easy grades. And if you move on, this is a higher crag. It's called Eros. And here you can find some of the longest beaches in Kalimnos. So if you would come to Kalimnos, I suggest you should take a long rope, at least 70 meters. Here, many routes, they go up all the way to 40 meters. So you would need an 80 meter rope. And you see the climbing has changed. It's now more vertical and you will see the rock was here more gray when it's slabby, then it's gray, yellowish when it's vertical. And eventually when it gets more yellow, you get this amazing two fast and overhanging climbs. And this is another crag. It's called Pescatore and uh, it's just three crags out of 30 crags that Talendos has. Usually when we disembark in Talendos, we are able to do climbing maybe even in three crags each day, trying to just go around and do a few pitches here, a few pitches there. And then if we like, we come back also the next day. I really love this picture because on one tour, we had this girl, her name is Jane. She brought with her this aerial silks and we hang them for her. And so while part of the crew was climbing, she was doing her aerial things. And again, like facing Kalimnos with the sea in the background. And that's all of us, two crews having lunch on a taverna at Talentos 
right on the seafront after the climbing. So that's the real Greece. You see the vineyards on the roof, the cats around, the sea, and the locals again, super friendly welcoming us for lunch. One of the unique places that you will see, it's Sikati Cave. Let me tell you something more about this place, which I really, really, really love. Even if I know how the place is, going back there, it's amazing. So you can see we're sailing around the island and now we are about to bring down the sails and get into the inlet to then go up and climb in Sikati Cave. So this cave was actually a huge cave and at a certain point the ceiling collapsed and now it's an open air cave and it's huge. So this is a picture from the entrance. From here, you will have to repel down. If you have never repelled, don't worry. The guide will take care of you. So basically you repel down and then you have lots, lots of roots inside. Some are huge, super hard, and you also get some easier stuff. Jane having fun on the silks from the inside of the cave. Here it's where you will find the biggest tufas probably on the island. They make for a very, very fun climbing because even if you climb on overhanging stuff, you will always find a way to rest in between the tufas. There are going to be lots of jugs. So even if it's very steep, it's still an affordable climb. And then of course you will have like all extreme stuff. Here's our friend enjoying the tufas inside the cave. As you can see, we have uh, these huge tufas and just some uh, capers and uh, figs growing on the rock. And you're just having fun. And this is actually where we moor our boats. Having the boat in this case, as I was telling you, it's something extremely valuable because if you need to walk, to Sikati Cave, you actually have to go through a very long trail. It's like almost an hour and a half walk. While uh, with the boat, we're just dropping our anchor in front of the beach and it's just five minutes uphill and then we are inside the cave ready to climb. Not only this is good for the access, for the approach, but it's also good for chilling. You can leave your backpacks on the beach. You can swim directly on the boat. You see we have climbed in the morning and now people are just chilling and tanning in the sea. And you see the beach is just for us. Nobody goes there because it's too far and inaccessible. This is us, same boat, same place, spending the night over below this wonderful sky full of stars. Deep water solo, that's an activity that's getting quite popular. Maybe you never tried it before. If you come with us, you will have the occasion to try it. So here we are actually in Vati. It's on the east coast of the island. And there's this inlet where there is this cave, which makes for the very good place to try to practice deep water solo. Because you can have some easier routes on the right. The more you go left, the harder they get. And uh, it's super safe because it's steep below. It's a little bit overhanging. So if you fall, you won't fall on the rock. So that's all of us. The picture was taken from the boat. So we just dropped the anchor right in front. And then we go back and forth with the stand up paddle, with the dinghy. On that day, we mounted the slack line and we had fun all together. Everybody's having fun on his own line. And it's actually a cool way to end the day, you know, all together, all the crew climbing and uh, diving from the top. I really would like to mention our relation with the locals. By being there, being back on the island over and over, we got some real friends on the island. So as you can see, that's Teo's father, Teo Hunza Taverna, and there's our sticker and he's preparing the grill for our dinner. Teo is the owner of the taverna. You see everybody brings his flags from his country. He's really, really, really like a big heart. And he always helped us whenever we had problems. He's always there to help us. So you can see he is welcoming us with our t-shirt. I'm actually wearing his Teo Taverna t-shirt. And here we brought some picture from the year before so he can hang in, in his taverna. So that's the relation we have with him. Right here, he's pouring at the end of the dinner his homemade honey. He just baked these sweet bowls for us. Here you see just the spirit of the island. I remember that night, it was quite windy and we had to moor our boat, not right in front in Arginonta Bay, where his taverna is, but we actually had to moor it a little bit farther away to have it safe. But we still got to have a dinner at his place. And then that is how he brought us back, just on his track loading everyone on it and go for it. This is another place, this taverna, it's in Palionisos. 
it's again at the seafront, right in front of the taverna on this terrace. It's going to be a boat moored. In the back of the taverna, there are three crags. So what we do, usually we go there at sunset. I mean, late in the afternoon after we've sailed and we arrive there, we go for climbing and then we go straight down to the taverna. So you see Christos, it's the husband on the left. Uh, Nomiki, it's the wife on the right. They are owning this taverna since generations and they're always welcome us and they are super sweet. Nomiki is the queen of the fish bowls. She's the best cook. Let me tell you something more about life on board. When you embark, from that moment on, you will be part of the crew. On both, we are a crew, so everybody does something. To sail, everybody helps. You will cook, move the gear around, disembark. And I think this is a very cool thing because on one side, it's like having a team building. So the relationship between the people on board really gets strong. It's something really nice. So on one side, there's going to be sailing. Again, sailing with the Sikati cave in the back. That's going to be a nice opportunity, whether you are a new sailor or even if you already have some experience. I'm going to be there for the whole week. Whenever you want, you can help me. You're more than welcome to do that. Bring up the sails, bring down the sails, do the knots. So you will learn everything about plotting your course on the map and all of that. If you want, you can chill. If you want to, to get on the helm, like uh, Gianpaolo did during this tour, he's now on the helm. I'm teaching him how to steer the boat with the sails. We will prepare our lunches, our meals breakfast, dinners, and uh, in this case, you see on the bottom right, nice aperitif. And then on the left, that's actually fresh tuna caught with our rod and we're having it just grilled a little bit. That was Jack. He came on the tour with his own uh, wakeboard. We attached a rope and uh, setting between one crack to the other one. We were dragging him. Everybody was trying. And in this case, we did some swinging between the boats. That's another game we like to do sometimes. The farther the boats get away, the higher you go up. And then whenever you want, you release and you jump in the water. And of course, we have some party night. You see Mike, the boss there, putting some music and girls preparing the drinks. And of course, some chilling. Here we were sailing on a catamaran back from Telendos, going inside the Arginonta Bay. Sun sets in the back. And just, you know, after a good day of climbing, it's nice to have a beer and enjoying the view. Now we'll go through some logistics, what you need to know for this tour. First of all, where is Kalimnos located? It's at the very, very east of Greece, right in front of Turkey, pretty much. And uh, you will be flying to Kos Island. And from Kos Island, you can easily reach international airports. So very easy to reach from uh, any big city in Europe. You will fly there and then with uh, 30 to 40 minutes, depends if you get the bus or if you get the taxi, you will be reaching the Coast Marina. You will easily locate our boats because of our flags, the check-in, usually the meeting point it's on board. That's going to be on a Saturday afternoon. We will uh, embark. Once you will be there, probably you will see me and other crew members loading the boat with the food and the pantry for the week. We will set the boat ready to sail out and then depends on the season. Probably we might already just sail out at night or just wait for the next morning and uh, make our course to Kalimnos. By the way, this picture has been taken in Vati. It's opposite of Deepwater Solo Cave that you saw. And in this case, you see the belayer. It's actually in the dinghy. So we tie the dinghy to the rock and you're able to climb straight away from the sea. Again, it's something unique. Well, regarding the gear, here you have a list. Of course, bring your personal climbing gear. Don't forget ropes, shoes, helmet. And I mean, all the list is here. It will be provided. It's important to have some warm clothes because even if it's super warm, at night we are still in the sea. You could have a little breeze. So bring like a pullover, a waterproof jacket. And for the rest of the week, you don't need much. Usually your bathing suit for most of the year, it's what you will be wearing throughout the day. So just a pullover for the evening and you're good to go. We usually use big boats. In the case of monohulls, like this one that you see here, uh, usually always more than 50 feet. So I'm talking about a boat that has five double cabins, three toilets, big kitchen, two refrigerators, oven. So it's just like really, really comfortable. 
And sometimes you also get some catamarans where you have like one toilet for each room. So it depends on which tour you, you come. Anyhow, these boats are made for charter. They are super, super comfortable. They tend not to roll too much. So also for like seasickness, especially the catamaran is bang on and they are very well equipped. Skills and level required. Trust me, guys, you don't need particular skills to join us on board. So neither on the sailing side, neither on the climbing side, because you will have professionals with you taking care of you. On the sea, that's going to be me or other crew members, skippers, or Alberto or other mountain guides. We will always find the crags where there are easy grades and also more challenging ones. So I know many people usually, they maybe started to climb indoor and then they want to experience the outdoor and they've never done it before. You can do it in a very safe way, actually by learning a lot from the guy that is gonna be available there 24 seven for the crew. So that's an amazing opportunity. I mean, we are sailing and during the sailing, we can just talk and, you know, he will show you how to create a belay station. So don't worry, regard your level, just be young, young inside. I mean, to finish here, you have a sum up of how the tour looks like. We have some dates here. We plan to spend September and October on the island. And uh, so there are a few dates there. You see the group size, the duration and everything that I told you anyhow you can contact us so if you're ready to join us come and let's sail and climb together